Hi, this is Jim Starkweather, the publisher of Kitmaker Network and Armorama.com, and welcome to another Cracking the Box. I realize it's been a little while since I've had one of these, but we're going to try to get back on track after moving the office, and this is our first one. Now, uh, this is a kit that just came out, uh, at least it's not actually out yet, but it just uh, was announced by Tamiya at their Tamiya Fair in Japan. And uh, it is the Tamiya, Tamiya M4A3E8 Sherman Easy 8 uh, Korean War uh, variant. Now, this is not a brand new tooling kit. I'm sure there are some new tool parts in here, but it is a, um, a amalgamation or parts of their earlier release for the uh, Sherman. Uh, it does include, oddly enough, doesn't say so anywhere, at least in a big way. I'm trying to, I was trying to look on this earlier to see if it maybe noted it here in the fine print, but this gas Jeep is included. <laughs> so it really should say like something like that underneath the text or you know, on the side of the box. I mean, there's nothing literally on the sides of the box or anything that show uh, that this is uh, also included. Um, now, a little bit about the color controversy. Hopefully this is coming in. Uh... <laughs> All right, so here we go. Um, this photo is uh, one that I guess the researchers, which are, include David Doyle, um, were, uh, were found uh, because prior to this, uh, it was black and white. Now, there is some conjecture on the internet that this has been colorized. Uh, it does look odd in terms of color photo, but maybe it was colorized to show what the witnesses said it looked like. I don't know. Um, but clearly, uh, this is a photo that they believed was strong enough. Now, and this red coloring, um, I'm going to go out on a limb here, but it is, it is a similar color used in a lot of Korean uh, kind of... Uh, Buildings, art, you know, it's a typical color that they might use, for example. Um, so that kind of makes more sense. In fact, there was a, a picture I, I just laughed about on the internet that uh, somebody put up that they recolorized this based on the color of some of these boots, saying that, oh, well, if their color boots was accurate, then this would be, like, purple looking. And I certainly don't think it was probably purple. That it, that it was this red color seems to make the most sense. But that said, um, color accuracy may, or the color validity may be slightly different. Um, you can see on uh, this side, this is one of the, this is the other version uh, that is supported with the, uh, the markings and so forth. So if you don't want to make this version with the, the face on it, you can make this version, which is the uh, just C Company 70th Heavy Tank Battalion, 1st Cavalry Division near Chikok, uh, September 1950. And then the other version is this one. And again, there's that sharky face thing. Uh, this is the Red, Rice's Red Devils. Uh, and there's the uh, text for that one. Rice's Red Devils C Company, 89 Tank Battalion, 25th Infantry Division, 1951. So a little bit later. And that red color is actually, looks like it's a combination of the XF7 flat red and the XF60 dark yellow. Uh, with a 4 to 1 ratio, I believe what the directions uh, call out for. But let's, enough of looking at the box. Let's open her up. All right, so I've got the instructions already pulled out here because I was looking at those yesterday. So they were on the bottom, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the instructions real quick just to kind of look at that. Um, oh, it's actually stapled. All right, so the, again, they're showing the two different versions here. Uh, hull is a separate piece arrangement, so you've got um, side pieces, a lower hull front uh, section going on. Um, then some, some of the structural rigidity, which looks like it has some pass-throughs there for who knows what. I uh, never know it's Mia. And uh, could be radio, could be not radio control, but at least motorized or something in another version. Um, and uh, then the, uh, the uh, track uh, pieces going on, suspension, uh, tracks going on. These are going to be a rubber track scenario, rubber band track, as people like to call them. And then the upper hull uh, is a one-piece arrangement, of course, with a, with a separate back piece and these lower uh, under, the, under fender pieces. And then lots of little side detail bits going on and more uh, hull detail bits going on. And the two pieces going together and the rear uh, venting and, and cooling system. And then going on to the turret, you can see uh, fairly straightforward. Looks like the barrel is a two-piece or, or three-piece arrangement, or actually four pieces, I guess, four pieces with this little uh, center bit. And um, if I can get this page separated, there we go. Uh, and then the turret going on, the figure that's, two figures that are included, uh, commander and then looks like a driver. Um, the 
50 cal machine gun going together, um, some gas can stowage, and then the field car. So that's why I actually opened up the manual. I was like, oh, okay. So I <laughs> looked for the plastic in terms of what was in there. But uh, field car, gas, 67B uh, assembly again, uh, starting with suspension, wheels, uh, seats going in, side pieces going on. It's fairly straightforward there. Uh, and I'm, I'm guessing that's a Tamiya kit. I don't, I'm not sure. Um, it, does, it usually lists any kind of cooperation with other manufacturers, so let's take a look at the plastic, though, and we will see. Uh, also included this, of course, is the background information piece, which does include a nice color uh, guide here with for markings and so forth. It does have that picture in there, a nice big version of the picture. Actually, it's a little bit cut off, I think, from the earlier the version they had, uh, with some other black and white photos. And then another color photo looks like they dug up here. Yeah, that is a separate, that's a different photo, because up here it's, it's blocked. Um, so yeah, it looks like they had a couple of color photo, um, versions. Although that green color, I can tell, does look a little off, or that certainly doesn't look like olive, olive drab. It looks, uh, like something more, a little bit brighter green. So I can see where the color, you know, is that co photo accurate. Um, and uh, again, some information uh, layout there, a uh, nice little diagram layout. All right, so first off, let's just kind of count the plastic. We've got, um, this piece, which is, um the uh some of the tank crew figures that look, look nicely molded um let me take a look at the dates on these just so we can see when they were made um this one is probably the original or actually this could be the 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 updated one here uh, all right so 2017 so this is a 2017 new new tool piece which makes sense you know because the figures and so forth probably aren't going to match the figures they already released um this is the 50 cal piece which uh, no, it's 20, 2017 also, so they've retooled or added something or done something with this uh, 50 cal that they had to actually uh, retool the mold. Um, this is the lower suspension bit, which, uh, let's check, uh, 2015. So this is the lower hull, and it's 2015. And um, the actual uh, upper hull is probably also stamped 2015, I'm guessing. Uh, 2015, yes, so upper hull, 2015. We'll take these out too and get a closer look at them. Um, the uh, bogies and all the suspension bits, which I'm guess, guessing again, 2015. 2015, yes. So 2015. Um, gonna have to do a lot of editing on this. The uh, upper turret rings and uh, gun and things like that. Uh, hmm, 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 hmm. It's hiding from me. It's trying to hide. I will find you. 2015. All right, so again, 2015. Uh, and that makes sense because the other piece had a mantlet in it as well. So this is the the kind of, uh, this is going to have some duplicate parts on it and so forth. And then the finally, the, this piece, which again, I'm going to guess is 2015, but we will double check just to be sure. Uh, we don't want to miss out on any, any new tooled goodness. Uh, 20, actually, this is 2017. So yeah, so this is a updated piece. Um, not sure why maybe the front here or some other detail pieces didn't uh, match up. So that is a new sprue. And then the up, the turret itself, which uh, I'm going to guess I'm going to actually take out of here because otherwise I'm having a hard time with the glare with the lots of light coming in here from the window. Hopefully, hopefully good for the recording, but not so good for me to see. Uh, this one is 2015, so. And the, the turret, just to kind of point out, it's got some really nice texturing on it, which I'm sure people noted in 2015. But yeah, it's a very nice, nicely modern uh, molded turret with uh, lots of good looking details, some some uh, factory stamps on here on the top. Um, of course, all the um, openable uh, loading points here. Um, and uh, it just looks good overall. Uh, decals. Decals are, um, interestingly enough, not, uh, you know, the red's not included, obviously, so, um, although I'm not sure, oh, Rice's Red Devils, right? So that's the Rice's Red Devils one, and this is the actual uh, face, which, um, of course, you have to put on in individual parts. So I think there's, there might be a yellow version of this. Somebody said there might, there, on the Facebook uh, post I was looking on, on um, Pavel's post, it said something about a yellow, a yellow one. So we'll see. Uh, tracks um, look fairly straightforward, not overly detail-y, but, you know, typical for rubber band tracks. But, you know, that's what you, that's what you got with the Shermans for the most part. I'm sure somebody couldn't do individual track links. They'd just be really small and delicate. 
Uh, and then the Gaz itself, which um, looks like an older release, but let's take a look at this one just to uh, to get this out of the way first, and then we'll go back and look at some of the uh, the stuff for the uh, Sherman. So this does not look like to me a molding, but maybe it is, and it's just really old to me a molding. Let me look on here. So 35021 sounds like it would be a really old production number, um, being that that 35 is obviously 35th scale. But uh, here we go. 1975, 1973, 1973. So this is, this is, this folks is 1973 vintage to me. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, it's still good. Look at the, the nice, um, folding in the, in the canvas and stuff on the seats and, uh, you know, the crisp, the crisp detail. I mean, for, for 1973, did I say 1973, right? For 1973 mold, it still holds up pretty well. Might not have the slide molding and, and such, but, and there are, you know, larger kind of uh, parts you're not going to actually be exposed, but you can see the, the push pin, uh, ejection pin um, molded parts are, are a little bit more uh, distinct. But, you know, there's a lot of nice detail. The, the hood there has some nice crisp uh, hood detail on it there with those little air, air, I assume those are like air holes or air scoops. Um, the grill, very nice. Um, the wheels look pretty nice. So, yeah, so you get a little bonus, 1973 vintage to me in with this kit. Hey, I'm sure they're not charging much more for it. I'm surprised at the box is as the size it is, to be, to be fair. The box is pretty, uh, pretty small. Here's the clear piece for the gas. It can, it's got a, a windshield with um, framing around it, obviously, and uh, some front or some uh, headlight headlamp detail. And then we'll go ahead and open up the rest of these. This was the one that was a, a new tool part. And of course, if you're not familiar with these reviews, there will be some photos, uh, detailed photos towards the end. So we've got a tow rope in here, which is just standard. Um, what would this be made out of? I'm like trying to think, what is a rope like this made out of? Nylon or something like that, right? Um, so that's fairly straightforward. And um, again, I'll have to look to see if there's any duplicate parts here with uh, some of these other bits. But it looks like they replaced the one that probably was in the prior Sherman kit for this. So probably it was maybe a variant difference. Maybe the other one's not a... I don't know what the other release was, whether it was a M4 A2 or something else. But uh, anyways, uh, so these are the under, under fender details, which are really nice. Actually, they go on... Kind of, they do are, are partially exposed during the outside of the tank, and then this is the underside, which again, some small uh, ejector pin marks, but not too bad. Um, so yeah, a little, a lot of little small detail bits in here. Some of the um, looks like maybe some of the uh, rear parts there, and some of the headlight and uh, light covers. Um, there is a little bit of texturing here on the front. Uh, lower hull, not a whole lot, but you can see there is a little bit, at least in, the, in this light anyways. Um, this was definitely an older piece, older piece. This one uh, also was new, wasn't it? So the, I guess the lower the lower hull, if maybe that's the other reason why that, I guess maybe it has a different lower hull. Um, let me just double check because I was right, or I'm right in thinking that. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, no, this was two fit. This this was 2015. So this is the lower hull, and again a three piece arrangement. Well, four pieces, I guess, if you count the back part, um, and some of the internal structuring bits. So again, some nice detail here for the suspension um, connection points, and uh, it all looks good. Uh, this one was this one was definitely one of the new tool pieces, though. So. Oh, and the, yeah, and the 50 cal was a new tool. So this one has the the different mantle on it, um, some of the uh, canvas protection around the mantle, um, the seals, I guess, um, and uh, the figures, which look nicely sculpted and rather dainty and small for tankers, which they should be. Tankers were not big guys. Uh, even some binoculars here, which are really tiny. Uh, some of the the rear deck detail. And uh, some of that grating there for, I guess that's the rear 
cooling vents. Um, the gun isolation, bit, which has some uh, nice detail there at the top. Um, never seen that before in a Sherman anyways, but it's like the actual uh, um, clamping mechanism maybe. And some individual track links here for stow, you know, for stowage on the tank for replacement bits. And then, not sure what that is, but that looks interesting there. Some kind of cleaning or some other kind of maintenance thing, probably. And uh, somebody's going, oh, that's the, whatever, the track connection rod thing. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> hey, I never said I was a tank expert. I just started a tank website. Ah, uh, staple. Give me a break. Uh, okay, so here's the 50 cal detail. And uh, I think maybe they're just trying to protect, per perfect the, the perfect 50 cal in plastic because they keep trying to like, you know, make one better and better. And it does, they do keep getting better. Uh, this one's got some nice slide molded detail. I think with this piece here is actually, you know, it's hollow. So uh, this, this piece goes all over there. Now they don't have the holes drilled through, so it's not exactly like it's air cooled, like the real thing and the barrel fits into it. But you know, hey, I think somebody's done that once before and it was pretty, pretty impressive. I can't remember who it was now off the top of my head. Um, and then the, the upper um, detail for the uh, ammo load in has got some ammo there going into the gun. Of course, what would a gun in combat be if it didn't have ammo? It looks like they've got two different versions of the barrel, one with the hand grabbing thing on it and one without. Um, and that's nice. And then we'll just go ahead and take a look at the older pieces here because I've never seen them, I don't think. I don't remember doing a review on this in 2015 anyways. Maybe I did. And I've just forgotten. All right, so the... Um, so the hull detail on this is fairly smooth along all these pieces. I think it has a cast section in the front here. Uh, almost looks like it's poured cement, but yeah, it's a cast uh, front section and the rest is all plate steel. Uh, so that makes sense why the casting has the kind of rougher uh, bits to it. Um, and uh, again, that piece I showed you here just goes along the back. Sherman's, you know, I think um, it's nice because it's not one of the larger Tanks, you know, it's easy to kind of deal with and so forth. Oops, I'm just kind of stick this up here just to get an idea. Oops, wrong way. Um, so, you know, it's just the scale of it. I just like the scale of it. It's just, it's just a nice tank overall. It's not too big, not too small. Easy to work with. Not like a Stuart where it's like, you know, ah, I'm going to break it. It's probably the way a lot of actual tankers felt about the real things. It's not too big. It's not too small. It's just right. Uh, so uh, out of the... Out of the thing did fall some of these black rubber grommets, and then they give you another bag with some more in there. Uh, the suspension, uh, two, two sprues of the same thing here. And uh, yeah, again, a lot of nice Tamiya detail here. Looking at it, it's uh, very, uh, very uh, 20, 21st century uh, here versus the other one. I can't remember if there was an, another 2017 piece that I. No, this is 2015, yeah. I uh, just want to make sure, because um, I forget, you know, from moment to moment, this is the way uh, <laughs> the way things are, I think. And uh, yeah, so hopefully the pictures will maybe get some of this detail better than I'm um, going to uh, narrate it. Again, there's a gas filler cap here with a nice little kind of lever uh, slash whatever it is, release system on it. Two of them, actually. And then we have the final sprue here, which is... The lower turret ring, the other mantlet you're not going to use, obviously, the barrel. Um, where's the uh, front? The uh, muzzle brake is right here, which looks nice in two pieces. Has a center round bit that's somewhere here, but not seeing it right off the top of my head. Maybe it's this little piece. I'm not sure. Um, and then again, the uh, looks like the, the front uh, hull. Uh, Patches are also cast because they have a very rough quality to them. Uh, of course, your tools and some jerry cans and the upper uh, commander's ring and hatch all looking nice there. Nice single piece barrel, of course, so no sanding lines, which is very cool. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at those photos and then we will come back and conclude.
Alrighty, I hope you enjoyed the uh, the little unboxing here for the Tamiya Korean War EZ8 and uh, also the Gaz 67B, right? Uh, so that's a little bit of a, an additional add-on bonus for this kit. I hope people enjoy. Um, it looks good. I mean, it's uh, certainly this release, I believe, when it the first came out in the uh, probably World War II version, um, was well received. And, and I think modelers obviously enjoy these Tamiya builds because they tend to be fairly easy to put together and not overly complex. So, um, but well detailed and uh, accurate for the most part. And uh, of course, the, the tracks um, probably these days are, are the thing that people uh, either shake their heads and go, oh, I'm going to have to try to find aftermarkets or, or they're like, yes, thank God, I don't have to deal with all the individual track lengths. So it's kind of a, you know, um, uh, a uh, cut and, or not cut and dry, it's a 50-50 it's a there sometimes with, with those, those types of things. Uh, although, again, I don't know if maybe someone can point out in the comment section if there really are alternatives to the Tamiya tracks, if there are even any aftermarkets out there. I don't remember seeing a whole lot of offerings for the, at least the Sherman tracks anyways. So maybe the rubber uh, rubber band tracks are the best way to go on those uh, overall. Alrighty, well, I mean, if, if for instance, they don't start doing the uh, separate track and link that they've been doing on some tanks, uh, which they could do, it looks like, with something like this. But, uh, but yeah, they may, may start getting into that in the future as they're doing it now with more and more, uh, all their 48th scale kits pretty much, but, uh, but certainly some of the 35th scale, even like the Archer had that uh, kind of track arrangement. Well, I'd like to thank again uh, Tamiya USA for providing us with this early advanced uh, uh, so, uh, review copy. I, I can speak. I can speak. Um, we will be looking for somebody to build this, uh, put it up on the site, maybe as a blog or something, and, and uh, give it some additional exposure with a review or a feature. So if you're interested in that, please uh, check out our sample sheet, and you can see uh, what's going on with our other, uh, what our other offerings there are as well. And uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Cracking the Box. Mm -hmm.